president's next stop is Seoul, South Korea. It will put the president right in the heart of the North Korea nuclear standoff. North Korea now mocking the president as a, quote, lunatic old man. But the president today again warning that the, quote, era of strategic patience is over. As South Korea's spy agency now says North Korea could be preparing another missile test, possibly during the president's visit. For more, let's bring in a top expert on the region. He is Gordon Chang. He's the author of the book Nuclear Showdown, North Korea Takes on the World. He joins us now. Good to have you on, Gordon. Thanks, Liz. Okay, let's do a, ra a wrap up. 22 missiles fired so far this year by North Korea. And you've reported on this and talked about it less than two months ago. North Korea test firing ICBM missiles by shooting them over Japan. But is the president's tough stance working? South Korea officials, Gordon, now warn the rhetoric should be dialed down. Critics say he's too bellicose. What do you say? Well, I think we should stop with the insults. But nonetheless, Trump has a very good policy on North Korea, and that is to cut off the flow of money to Pyongyang. Because if Kim Jong-un, the ruler there, doesn't have money, then he can't build nukes or he can't fire off missiles and he can't do something else, which is gift politics. In other words, giving luxury items to senior regime elements in order to buy their loyalty. We're seeing some evidence that this campaign is working because junior level officials in Pyongyang who are favored class are not getting their rations from the government, according to unconfirmed reports. If those reports are true, it means that President Trump's campaign, which is still in its early stages, is working. You know, Gordon, uh, we have some breaking information coming in. The Japanese prime minister, Shinzo Abe, he weighed in on how North Korea is talking and its dialogue about this trip. Let's take a listen. Roll tape. North Korea has used those talks just to gain time to further develop the nuclear program, as well as missiles. So North Korean dialogue just for the purpose of dialogue is meaningless. That is our experience. Okay, you can catch the full interview of Brett Baer's interview with Abe, Shinzo Abe, tonight on Social Report on Fox News at 6 p.m. Eastern Time. Gordon, what did you think of what the Prime Minister of Japan just said? Oh, he's absolutely right. You know, there is a time for diplomacy, but that time is not now. The time for diplomacy is when Kim Jong-un realizes that he has no choice but to give up his weapons. Um, I think that that's going to be within, let's say, around nine months, perhaps a year, when President Trump's strangulation campaign really will have an effect. Then you can sit down and talk to the North Koreans. But if we do that beforehand, if we do that now, um, as the Japanese prime minister just said, we're giving the North Koreans time to increase their arsenal. And we've seen this before. We've had talks with the North Koreans, and they've used that to buy time. And the Chinese have helped them do that during the six-party talks last decade. Yeah, the, so I certainly agree. Yeah, the open secret in D.C. is that North Korea is probably the best negotiators around because they're buying time by doing what you just said. So the, the question, though, Gordon, is what would China do if North Korea made a move against Japan? I mean, what do you expect also from the trip to China? Yeah. Well, uh, the Chinese in an editorial in the Global Times, which is not official, but it is owned and controlled by People's Daily, the most authoritative publication in China. Global Times in an editorial, which I think reflects Beijing's view, said that if North Korea strikes first, China is not going to stand by North Korea because they have a mutual defense treaty. But that if the United States strikes North Korea first, then China will intervene on North Korea's side. I think that probably reflects accurately what the Chinese would do in a situation in the future. You know, the president is saying that Japan should buy U.S. military hardware to shoot North Korea's missiles out of the sky. We're going to talk about that later in the show. But, Gordon, the other thing that's happening is President Trump is planning a meeting with his Russian counterpart, Vladimir Putin, this week in Vietnam to talk about North Korea. What do you expect there? Well, I expect President Trump to try to separate Beijing from Moscow. Putin, of course, is always a troublemaker, but he's much more interested in making trouble in Ukraine and the Baltics than he is in uh, the Far East. So, I, you know, Putin, if he sees a chance to needle the United States, will do so. So I think what President Trump will be doing is making it clear to Putin that he should not be doing that. Gordon, it's always terrific to have you on. Again, buy Gordon's books. He's one of the sharpest minds out there on this region. Good to see you, Gordon. Thanks for coming on.